Welcome to PICO CTF 2013. I'm Peter Chapman, the technical lead for this year's competition and your guide through PICO CTF orientation. I'm going to go over the format and the logistics of the competition. So let's get started. PICO CTF is a computer security competition where students must reverse engineer, break, hack, decrypt, or do whatever it takes to solve the problem. The competition is organized into the format of a story-driven game, and this year's theme is Toaster Wars. Pico CTF opens April 26th at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and closes May 6th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. However, keep in mind we'll keep all the challenges and educational material open indefinitely for those to join afterwards. Let's discuss eligibility. Although the content of the challenges target a high school student, anyone can play. We only place restrictions on winners of the competition. Winners must be currently attending a school in the United States and be in grades 6 through 12. However, please do not hesitate to contact us for your clarification regarding eligibility or anything else for that matter. We have a couple of different types of winners in PICO CTF. There will be winning teams and winning schools. Winning teams will be the top three teams whose players are individually eligible, according to the rules I just described. A winning school is a school whose team is individually eligible and all the players on that team attend the school. Please note that we allow winning teams to attend a winning school. Also note that most home schools will not be eligible as a winning school, but can field a winning team. Now let's get right to competing. We recognize that PICO CTF competitors come from a very diverse set of backgrounds. To facilitate this, we've divided the competition in four video game inspired levels. Each level is harder than the last, but all teams must start from the beginning. The first level doesn't require a programming background. Some math and a little computer know-how will get you a long way. Level two expects a basic programming experience. Something taught in an intro course, usually in a language like Visual Basic or Alice would be sufficient. Level three targets AP computer science students. The programming here is quite a bit more involved than that in level two. Lastly, we have level four. Level four ranges from hard problems to very, very hard problems. Altogether, there will be around 50 problems, five to 10 problems in each of the first three levels and about 20 to 30 problems in level four. I'll also take a minute to note that these are general guidelines that we use to design the problems, but you shouldn't feel discouraged if you're not able to make the level that you hope to. To reward teams for reaching each new level, they will unlock a certificate of completion. These are going to be great for hanging on a wall, putting in a trophy case, or mentioning on a college application. To actually view and answer problems, you'll be doing so in our browser-based video game. The game will play very similar to the preview. You walk around the world, interacting with the story, clicking on objects to launch new problems. Solving problems unlocks new parts of the world and new problems. Keep in mind this full game viewer requires a modern web browser and a decently fast computer. If you don't have access to that, that's okay. We'll provide a basic problem viewer that allows you to compete from almost any web browser. On our website, we'll have a bunch of other resources other than the game. Like I said, we'll have a basic problem viewer, have a chat functionality where teams can communicate with each other and also contact the competition organizers. There will also be a scoreboard listing the top teams in the competition at the time. We'll have a news section where we'll be able to post information related to the competition and hints and clarifications relating to confusing problems. We'll also have a web shell that allows students to connect to a Linux machine that we have built for the competition. It contains a lot of useful software and all the files used in the problems. And lastly, I should probably mention that most problems will have a hint or even a lecture video associated with it. When viewing the problem, there will be a hint button, and when you click it, you'll be presented with text, a link, or even an embedded video that should help teams out with the problem. Let's take a minute to talk about scoring. Every challenge has an associated point value. 
completing that challenge will award that team that point value. Points are awarded regardless of the progress of other teams. That is, being the first team to solve a problem doesn't grant any bonus points. However, it should be noted that time will be used as a tiebreaker in the event that two teams have the same score. You're probably thinking that hackers don't follow any rules, but I'm sorry to tell you that PicoCTF has a few guidelines. First, I'd like to state there are no limitations on the resources or tools that you can use. Second, once the competition begins, only people on your team should be the ones solving problems. The team advisor and others can facilitate in solving other problems, meaning they can help set up tools or point you to correct resources, but they can't be critical in solving the problem. And lastly, teams may not under any circumstances interfere with other teams or the infrastructure of the competition. Breaking these rules result in disqualification from the competition and the notification of the associated school district. As we wrap up, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Symantec, the Entertainment Technology Center, Intel, and Microsoft. Good luck and have fun.